Hello, Sonoran Desert Institute. This is Jared, and today let's talk about putting some iron sights on your AR-15 build. Uh, I've got some iron sights here. Um, they're rail-mounted sight set. Uh, let's go ahead and get this box open and figure out what we've got inside of here. So, we've got a front and a rear sight. Let's talk about getting these on in the correct manner. So, with our rear sight, the first thing we want to think about is how is the aperture engaged with the site. When you look at the site, what you'll see, especially on the smaller aperture site, there's a dish here. That dish should be towards your eye. So we should push forward and we get the, the bigger aperture. Um, we push back to the rear, we get the dish size. That helps your eye line up on that aperture. So when we mount this, we're gonna mount that so that that dish is to the back of the gun, okay? But let's come back to that. Let's talk about the front sight first. We'll talk about how we're gonna mount that and then I'll show you us, show us actually putting those on. So you've got a front sight tower here. A um, Couple of things you wanna think about. We wanna reduce glare on the, on the sight and on the eye line. And so anytime that you have a sight that has some kind of serrations on it, those should go towards the rear of the rifle towards the shooter's eye. What that does is it breaks up the light so we don't get any gleam and the post looks nice and clean in the process. So now let's get these on um, the rifle itself. So first thing we need to do is we need to remove the screw here um, because we're gonna slide this onto the Picatinny rail and then the screw is going to lock it in one of the slots. So let's get the screw out of here. A little bit bigger screwdriver. Get that screw loosened up and then we can just pull it right out now a couple of things you can do here also we could also break this gun down and get the charging handle out of the way which is something that i'm going to do really quickly and so i am just going to split this receiver before i split it i'm going to check and make sure that we're clear let the bolt go forward i'm going to split the receiver I'm going to get the bolt and my charging handle out of the way that gives me a clean area here for the sight to slide over. And then I can place that sight on my rail and just slide it up until I'm happy with placement. Now keeping in mind, if you're adding an optic to this, if you're adding um, some other type of sight to it, you may have to play with where this rear sight is. I typically like to keep my rear sight as far to the rear as I can without getting in the way of me engaging my charging handle. So if you think about coming down and grabbing your charging handle here, or even if we place the charging handle back in here now that we have it on the rail, can I get in between the site? Am I gonna run my finger into the site? You know, I'm gonna go one more notch forward. That gives me just a little more space. And that's where I'm gonna lock this one down. Again, this is one of those things that you can, you can adjust how it sets up on the gun depending on your preference okay so I'm gonna go ahead and set this down gently and let's get that sight locked into place okay we've got the sight locked into place and it, it's nice and tight on the rail the next thing that we want to do is we want to install the front sight before I do that I'm gonna go ahead and put the bolt carrier group back in the gun um, there's no reason for it to be separated anymore because the front sight can come on from the front of the gun. So making sure that bolt's in the forward position, slide that carrier in there, go ahead and lock the, the charging handle and the carrier forward, and lock that split pin in place. Now I like to know that my guns are open and clear so I'm going to go ahead and lock that bolt to the rear so I can see a nice open clear chamber and then I know it's safe for me to go ahead and continue working on this gun. So same process here. Again, remembering that we want the serrated side towards the shooter's eye. So we're gonna remove the, the screw here. And then we can slide that sight onto the rail system. Now, again, we've gotta think about what other attachments have we got going on. You know, if we've got a possibility for a sling attachment here, maybe we wanna bring the sight back a little bit so we're not in interfering with the, how that sling operates. If we're mounting a flashlight or something, maybe we wanna push it a little bit forward so that we've got an easy way to engage that flashlight and use it. 
I'm going to leave it out here at this far position because um, that's what I'm most used to. Um, but you can really position it anywhere on this rail because we're then going to zero the gun with the sights. So I'll leave it out here in the, the, the distant position so we've got plenty of room to put other accessories on. And once again, I'm just going to go ahead and tighten this screw down and lock this front sight in place. All right, I've got the front screw, the front sight locked in place with the screw. Uh, again, what we're looking for here is we're looking for that serrated surface to be towards the shooter's eye. And then on the rear sight, we're looking for that cup surface to be towards the shooter's eye. Now, talking about where we put that front sight and that rear sight, again, the closer you get them together, the shorter your sight radius, which induces error, okay? So the more that we can spread them out, the better off we are. But it, depending on what other accessories you're putting on, you may have to adjust them ever so slightly. If you've enjoyed this video on how to get some iron sights put on an AR-15, uh, hit the subscribe button down below and check out our other videos.